preview edition of the BHN podcast, the Boston Hockey Now podcast. As usual, my partner in crime, Jimmy Murphy, is here. I'm Joe Haggerty, your Boston Hockey Now Bruins writer. And we have with us today a special guest, uh, over 600 games in the NHL, Stanley Cup winner with the New Jersey Devils. You see him now on the NHL Network, uh, Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Uh, Mike Rupp, Rupper, thanks for joining us. And just tell us, first of all, how amped are you to just have some NHL games coming this week to be able to actually talk about games, have something to talk about hockey-wise? Well, thanks for having me on, guys. Jimmy, Joe, thanks uh, again. Hopefully you guys are staying safe. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited. I, <laughs> it's funny because, I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things in this world, I mean, when we're talking sports, we're talking about something that's probably a few steps down the totem pole as far as importance but when when you're you're talking about hockey and you're talking about sports it's been part of you know your life so much when it seems like it's kind of taken away or d- disrupted it you really you really love when you get it back to some some shape of normalcy so i'm excited for the season to launch and uh you know i've i just think that the league's done a great job of being creative in the return to play last year and being creative and and what they need to do to make this year happen. So I'm I'm jacked. I'm ready to go. Rupp, uh, you know, Rupp, you look at it right now, it was such a great success, obviously, in the bubble. But, you know, as everyone's pointed out, they were were trapped and they couldn't go anywhere. So, you know, that's one of the main reasons why. Now these guys are are free to go wherever. It's it's kind of an honor code, so to speak. We've already seen some issues in Dallas uh, with their season opener against the Panthers getting postponed. Uh, Columbus had some issues, Vancouver, and we're going to continue to see more of these. Uh, if you're you're a leader, let's say you're a captain in a dressing room right now or an alternate captain, veteran guy, what, what are you telling the young guys in that locker room to get through this? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's part of just like anything else is, as far as being being a good teammate. You got to have trust in guys and just carrying out X's and O's, and you got to trust guys to um, – you know, sacrifice uh, some personal gain to, to for the benefit of the team, and that's kind of right up the same avenue that what it is now. I mean, um, you know, I think it's a matter of if you're in that room, and there's going to be cases like you've already mentioned. There's a few teams that have already been going through it, and it's just it, it's different now. We can't expect there to be zero like there was in the bubble, um, but it's about managing it and and doing your best, and, and it basically just comes down to hey, if you're in, you're in. If you're not, then just <laughs> then just go home now. You know, I mean, uh, there's too many sacrifices that are being made across the board to try to pull things off. So, um, but you know, once you get on the ice, it's hockey as usual. And uh, that, that should be a good thing in this world that we live in. Now it's, you can get back to some normalcy and some things that kind of distract you from um, things you can't do in life. Well, you can play hockey still and they're making that available for you. So um, I think that's the biggest thing. It's just, just to uh, respect the rest of the team and, and follow the proper protocols. Yeah, obviously there's going to be, you know, like the other sports, there's going to be issues and instances where well, I'm sure we'll see postponements and, and things happen throughout the year. But, you know, there, there are some upsides uh, to this crazy, uh, strange hockey world, NHL world and world in general that we're living in right now. Just as far as what they had to do this year, there's going to be some some different things going on. The realignment and the different teams that are going to be in divisions uh, against each other this year, the All-Canadian Division. Uh, the teams only playing teams in their division uh, eight times in this 56-game uh, compacted schedule. I, I've always wanted more divisional games, teams playing each other that many times during the regular season. Maybe, you know, you don't play the Arizona Coyotes twice if you're in the East and you play your, uh, you know, your, your divisional opponents more. Uh, how much are you looking forward to or intrigued by some of these wrinkles, whether it's divisional teams playing each other more, whether it's, you know, the new alignment of the divisions. There's a lot of different things going on here. I'm curious as hell as how it's all going to play out. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the knee-jerk reaction is just thinking of rivalries, right? And, uh, I mean, there's no yeah. fan base knows rivalries better than the original six team in Boston, and, and that those fans got to be pumped to maybe. I mean, the game has certainly changed a lot since then, but, um, you can, you know, anytime you can kind of throw some gasoline on the fire as far as some matchups are, that's, that's it's always good entertainment. So I think that's a, a really big thing that I'm looking forward to. I mean, the fact that you even have in this Canadian division, that North division, um, you know, with there being less teams uh, in that division, you're going to have teams playing 10 times. I mean, you have Calgary and Edmonton 
Calgary and Edmonton <laughs> playing 10 times. I mean, I can't wait to watch that. So, um, you know, those are all great, great things to look forward to. I guess if you're going to be nitpicky, I don't love that it's your only playing your division, but that's what it is. I mean, that's the, how we're able to try to pull this off. Um, I think there's going to be some, some smoke and mirrors with some teams that potentially could make the playoffs, and you're going to have teams specifically in that East division that the Bruins are in that – there's going to be a playoff team that deserves to be in the playoffs and is a playoff team that is not going to be in the playoffs. So um, yep. I guess that's just you dealing with the cards you're dealt and uh, you just don't want to be one of those teams. Let, let's go to that division there. I'm glad you mentioned that. And obviously, uh, you know, a couple of your former teams are in there. Actually, all of them, right? I mean, uh, you, you've seen, like, I mean, the conference battles at times and the playoff between the Penguins and Bruins. So maybe there's some history there. There's still some guys left from both those teams. But if you're looking at it and you're you're kind of pairing teams up as what might be the rivalry that really grows the most out of this, are there two teams pitted against each other that stand out to you? Um it's tough to say. You know what I've always been, I mean, I from playing in that playing in in this rivalry of of the Penguins and uh, and Flyers, but to right. be honest, I feel like that that rivalry's kind of lost its thunder over the last number of years. So, I mean, to say that it's it's one of the league's best rivals, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe uh, there's certain disdain between uh, being one on the east coast of PA and one on the west side of PA, and uh, you know that, that that's one thing. But I, we just haven't had that complete hatred i mean those days where scott hartnell was there and you know then there's the days of, of max help in pittsburgh and the crosby Giroux matchups and all those things those haven't really happened too much lately so i think this gives an opportunity for some for some other things to happen uh you know it doesn't have to be one of those rivalries that we're used to seeing i mean we know that boston and montreal has always been a great rivalry well that's yeah. not going to exist this year so, yep. uh, you know, there's a good chance that there could be another team step up to that. And as far as storylines go, maybe that's the Washington Capitals. I was <laughs> we'll just going to go see, there, Robert. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's the juicy part with all this is there's tons of storylines that it could go to. And I think that that's the great thing about an NHL season is every season tells its own story. And this year is going to be a unique one. So, um, you know, looking forward to, to certain matchups are one thing. But I think the bigger thing in that division is having that many – capable playoff teams and you're going to have to slug it out and because you're yeah. going to you know if you're not willing to slug it out and and uh get some ugly wins along the way and have some again disdain towards uh, the opponent then you're going to be left on the outside looking in yeah i think i think when i was on the radio with you i called uh the uh the east division the the division of death because it, it it's true it's the toughest division of yeah. all all the divisions in this realigned NHL, I think there's going to be two legit uh, uh, playoff teams that aren't going to make it. If you consider the Rangers a, a legit playoff team, they're not one of my dark horse teams to be, you know, really good this year. There's there's going to be some quality teams that, that aren't going to make it into the playoffs. And you know, you mentioned the Capitals, and I, I do think the Capitals and the Bruins that'll be a rivalry this year for sure. And Even you know, the Bruins, gonna, the, Bru the Bruins are going to have to turn it into a rivalry by actually beating the Capitals every once in a while. That's when it actually turns into a rivalry when the Bruins actually can beat that team. And they've been kicked around the block for the, by them for about 10 years now. But I, I'm curious. I know you had some pretty strong reactions to the Zidane Chara uh, signing with the Capitals, kind of the Bruins sort of moving on from him and not doing everything they could to keep their 14-year captain. I just wanted to get your thoughts, Rupper, on, on Chara going to Washington and, and the Bruins sort of letting him go. Yeah, I mean, there's kind of two sides to it for me. I'm certainly, you know, I'm not inside that room, so I don't know. Uh, um, but I, you know, could just give from my opinion of playing in the league and what I've experienced. Um, the one thing I'll say over the last number of years that Don Sweeney and the uh, company has done a great job of is, you know, the mo or the, the, you know, the the narrative of this team is, oh well, they've they're old, they're they're turning the corner, they're not going to be competitive anymore. And the one thing that uh, Bruce Cassidy's done a phenomenal job of is putting young players in and situations to succeed and uh, to the tune of winning the president's trophy last year. And, yep. you know, I, I think that this is a team, um, you know, over the last two years, uh, that narrative has not been there, but if you think back three, four years ago, it was the Boston Bruins. What are they going to do? I mean, they've got these aging out players and they don't have that next wave. I mean, we know all the way dating back to where 
what they had, uh, they were accumulating their, all those first round picks that one year and they're trying to sit here and turn this thing around. And um, so I guess by me saying all that is they've done a great job in that organization of not listening to what people say <laughs> and, yeah. and, and changing on the fly and being competitive, not just being competitive, being a contender each year. So, um, you know, I would, I would, you know, I have to, uh, I don't agree with the Chara thing, but it, who am I to question what they're doing? Cause they've been making some really good decisions over the last number of years, but I will say it from this standpoint, when I saw what Z signed for in Washington, uh, to think that, you know, right, maybe this isn't the case, but I have to assume that he'd be willing to take that same price in Boston to stay there and not uproot the family and, and be the captain or be a leader on that team that he won a cup with and has been with so for so long. Um, I, that does make sense to me necessarily uh, to think that, you know, if this guy, this guy can't figure in to be on the, even the third pair, uh, what he brings to the table in a cadenced year with some of those teams you're in, in the division you're going to be with, uh, it's tough. It's tough. And and I would even double down with that is the Tory Krug situation makes it even more difficult because you already have big disruption on your back end. And, and that hasn't necessarily, that has not been replaced. And uh, so, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that's one that I, I, I can't really wrap my ha- head around. I'm interested to see how they manage. But, you know, this organization wants to get younger. They want to give some um, you know, some experience to players. I've even gone as far as thinking to myself with, with the, with Pasternak being, being out with Marchand dealing with, you know, some health issues that he's, he's back, but you know, we don't know at what level. Yeah. Is it, is it a year where they're almost looking like, Hey, maybe this is a year where we, we transition a little bit, you know, not that you never throw in the towel and you want to be competitive every night, but maybe this is the year to do it. I don't know. Uh, but I, the, the big Z one, I just, I would just have to think that any team adding that guy, even in the smallest of roles is only going to help your team. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, they're obviously trying to do it on the fly a little bit and we'll see this could be the year it happens because, you know, the young guys don't respond and, you know, things don't fall into place for them and, and they do just drop down a level. It's tough to do it on the fly. Like they're doing it. You're right. Rupper, they have been successful doing that. But I think for sure, after this year, when David Krejci and Tuka Rask are both up, they're going to have some serious questions as to, you know, the core group and and whether they're going to continue to go for it, whether they do have to rebuild a little bit. You know, we'll see where they go with that. But I, as far as Chara goes, just give us you, – you were a physical player in the NHL. You played against Chara. Give us the perspective of a guy that's a physical player – that's playing against a team that has Chara versus, uh, you know, a physical player playing against the team that no longer has Chara. Do you feel a, a lot more uh, liberty to go out and, and, you know, run around a little bit and, and play a little more physical when Chara's not there? This is my concern for the Bruins is that with Chara gone now, you've lost that big intimidator, intimidator on the back end that stops a lot of that stuff and protects your skill guys. And I think there's going to be, a, even though it's a different NHL now, I think there's going to be more runs and more physicality thrown at the Bruins skill players because Char is not there anymore. Yeah. So, you know, I, I already said it once in this conversation, you guys know as well as anybody else, the, the league's changed, right? So I'm not yep. trying to make it, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's the wild, wild west, but what hasn't changed is a certain kind of mindsets and, and mindsets about you want to find an edge in any way you can. So let's just use an example. If I'm playing for, you know, if I'm playing for the New York Islanders, and we're going against the Boston Bruins. You know, uh, let's say on the roster, let's say, let's say when Big Z was on the Bruins roster, you might be able to pick, let me think, one guy maybe on roster with the Islanders that would try to rough up Patrice Bergeron or uh, David Krejci after a whistle or try to, try to get, you know, disrupt a, a player like Brad Marchand. Well, that's all, that's all good. But now when you, when you end up removing a, a player like, like Big Z, um, for an example, or you just don't have that bite in your roster. Now, instead of having one player on roster, you got some more players that are a little more brave on on my Islanders team. You know, maybe there's five of us now that feel comfortable because they don't feel like there's anything to have to be concerned about. That to me is a little bit of an issue because if I'm on that team, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, all right, listen, I'm not a top end guy. I'm not a, I'm not a player. I'm just using the Islanders as, as an example. What can yeah. I do to help our team win this game tonight? Well, 
Well, I'll tell you what, I'll try to rope Brad Marchand in any chance I can. And there's really, uh, you know, nothing that's going to stop me from doing that. And again, the game's changed. There's not players that are going to come, you know, smash you over the head to have you stop. But there's just a, there's a respect level that is out there when you have the the big unit on the back end. And that's a concern of mine because, you know, that this team's bread and butter is their, their top guys. And, um, you know, the Bruins are, are an organization over the years that, um, you know, those guys were, were sheltered pretty good. But now they're kind of out in the open, in my opinion. So it'll be interesting how teams manage that because that should be your your game plan is to shut down the top guys. Pasternak, Bergeron, Marchand. Yep. You do that any way you can. What are your matchups you can? So, um, you know, that that's something I'm certainly concerned about with the Bruins. Murph, you're muted, but I'm you're muted. Maybe that's a sign I shouldn't talk. But uh, <laughs> hey, Rupert, you know, talking, going back to Char and Washington there, and you know him choosing Washington. I've been told, you know, there are other teams in the mix. I know for a fact the Montreal Canadiens were as well. But it appears he really wanted to play with Ovi, and he thinks they have a really good shot there. Um, but also, how much? Do you think the team being in the Bruins division and him getting a chance at the Bruins eight times factors into him signing there? Um, man, that, that's tough to say. Um, you know, I think uh, what factors in is uh, a contender. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at that point in your career, you you want to you want to win, and so I think that that's probably a, a driving force. Um, you know, I, it's hard to say without, you know, knowing the situation per se. But if it's me, um, you want a contender that that is in the same uh, region because <laughs> you don't know that, you know, as far as the family situation, which, you know, whether it's getting back, uh, you know, seeing the family or having them come down from Boston or whatever the situation is, uh, there's a lot of a lot of things with that. So, um, you know, I, yeah, I think that I don't think that it was anything on the lines i don't know it's hard to say i don't think uh, i don't think z would be like that i mean he, he's won a cup there but listen i know when i was playing in pittsburgh mm-hmm. and you know at that time i played in uh new jersey i played in pittsburgh um inside that division uh i thought i was going to resign in pittsburgh and when i didn't resign in pittsburgh the final two teams on free agency that it came out to me were the chicago blackhawks and the new york rangers and I wanted to play against the Pittsburgh Penguins. I wanted yep. to show them that, uh, that you know, my thing in Pittsburgh was that they gave me a two-year deal, and, and I knew I'd get a three-year deal somewhere else. And I wanted that third year in Pittsburgh. I wanted to stay there. But, they, you know, they, they made the decision. So in, in my head, I was like, you know what? I want to play against these guys as much as I can. Yeah. So I know that goes through some too. players. It went through my head. So I, I, I yep. wouldn't put it past them. Hey, and just to follow up there, too, you bring up the Pittsburgh Penguins and switching back to what Hag said before that, you know, there's going to be some good teams in this division that don't make the playoffs. And I kind of look, as crazy as it sounds, I, I right now I kind of envision the Penguins and the Bruins battling for that final playoff spot, kind of two teams in parallel situations where, you know, they're in the final windows there. They've got their core veterans that have won before, but, they, you know, they, you still got a little window there to win another one. I mean – I, I would lean towards Pittsburgh in terms of having a, a wider window to do that. But um, do you look at those two teams that way that they're, they're sort of like, you know, this could be it. And they might, and you mentioned it earlier, maybe this is the year one team says, Hey, we want to give it a shot. And if we, we don't make it, so be it. We're at least developing, but do you, do you see them in similar paths right now? I do. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that because we just finished a, a segment on NHL network where, uh, we were just kind of doing some quick hitters, and and what came up was, um, which team has a a better, which which player's team has a better chance of winning um, before another cup before the end of their careers? Sidney Crosby and the Penguins, or Patrice Bergeron and the Bruins? And um, you know, those are those are very good comparables. I mean, you're talking world class. Both of them are going to be Hall of Famers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, well respected. Um, throughout the league and throughout the, the game of hockey, uh, it's it's tough. I, I there's something there though. With I'm not, I don't think Pittsburgh is a favorite by any stretch. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's because they've won three, but there's still something to me where if you still have 87 and 
on Crosby, Malkin on roster, you've got a chance. And that's no knock to Patrice Bergeron and 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 Brad Marchand and David Krejci because those guys have been those guys have been better than those other two. But there's just something yeah. that that I don't know if it's the nostalgia of, of what they have accomplished and and what they have been individually as players. But I would just think that you know the, the, these two teams are certainly going to battle it out for the last spot. It's funny though when I look at that division. And I sit there, it, it doesn't make sense. And I think that's what makes the season intriguing is when I look at that division, I think there's one stable playoff team for me, and that's Washington. I think Washington makes the playoffs. Yeah. After that, after that, it's up in the air. It could be a bunch of different things. They're all, there's a lot of playoff potential teams in that division, but they're going to only take four. So, um, <laughs> But then I'll lead myself to my next question. If you ask me who's a cup contender, uh, I'd probably put Pittsburgh in that mix. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I don't even know if they're making the playoffs, but I consider them a cup contender. It doesn't make sense, but I don't know if that's because I would put the Boston Bruins there too. Cause I don't know if it's because of what they've done and the respect that their big guys have, have garnered in bo- both organizations, but it's going to be exciting because I'll tell you what the Philadelphia Flyers, if last year was any sign of what they're the, the trajectory of where they're going, they're going to be right in the hunt there. New York mm-hmm. Islander structure they're gonna bore you. They're gonna bore the hell out of you. But they're gonna they're gonna be in the mix. And uh, the New York Rangers, what are they gonna be? Are they gonna be anything like they were when they before the pause last year? Uh, it, it's gonna be tough. But the Bruins and Penguins, it'll probably go down to the wire. And then Nolan Patrick maybe uh, you know stays healthy, and the, the Flyers get an even another extremely talented player back in the mix with all this the group of players that they have. That, that, that's gonna be such a good division. Uh, We'll leave you with this one, Rob. Just uh, put you on the spot. Give us uh, who's going to come out of each of the four divisions uh, at the final four there in the playoffs and who you have as your cup winner uh, for your predictions here. Oh, that's a good one. Um, whew. Uh, I'll start with the North, uh, the Canadian division. I've got the Montreal Canadiens. I'm with uh, you. That one's uh, – that one's a hit or miss, though, because there's so many new faces. It could take time, and nobody has time on their side of the season. Uh, but I have them. Um, and if I go to the uh, West, I would say, I, I mean, I've got to go with uh, who we got, who I got out there. Um, who? Uh, well, let's uh, pick an easier one. Uh, I'll pick. Uh, the central, I, I got to go with. Uh, I might be getting these digits messed up. I'm still working on these things. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna say, man. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Well, Tampa, I was just thinking Tampa. about something. Colorado in the West. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm all messed up. I'll, what are you gotta use a pencil. <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, let's say I got. Uh, I got Tampa. I think Tampa is going to be a team, and I know they're in the central. So Tampa in the central. I'll yeah. go in the, uh, the the new East. I will go with. Um, Washington Capitals. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll go Montreal, and then that would have to leave me with uh, that. West is called uh, is that's Colorado, Colorado, is it not? Yeah, that's a, yep. that's a weird that's that weird West division that goes as far east as uh, <laughs> or central United States as Minnesota. I think they fall yeah. in that, that category. So uh, yeah, that, I mean <laughs> those are no surprises. I, I you know I there could. I, let me say this. I'm picking pretty much the favorites because of the way their rosters are built and what I believe in their roster. But I'll guarantee mm-hmm. you one thing. There's going to be at least one or two teams that surprise everybody just because of the yeah. the foreign nature of what we're dealing with right now. And it's the, the it's a short season, man. Anything happen? I mean, look at the Buffalo Sabres last couple seasons. Their start to yep. the seasons. If yep. they had those kind of starts in this season, they'll yeah, be the right call. Be winner. Good call, you know? man. Yeah, but, but you know, but but that team had a complete and utter meltdown the last couple of years after December. <laughs> well, December now is, uh, you know, it's it's different now. So it, it'll be interesting yeah, to see it's what next happens. week. <laughs> yeah, R- yeah. Rupert, uh, exactly. thanks for the time, my friend. We, we appreciate. it. Let's uh, drop the puck and get hockey, get hockey going. Awesome, fellas. Anytime. Let me know and enjoy it. All, All right. right, thanks, buddy. Mike, right there. Hey, Hags. Before we after we let uh we let Rupert go here, you know. I gotta, I gotta say, he's right on the Capitals. I like the Capitals a lot in the North. Yep. Um, if the West, 
I'm going to go with the Blues. And then, let's see, we got the North. Uh, oh, the, see, I can't even get the division straight. The Capitals are in the East. Sorry, I said the North. Right. I, I got the Capitals in the East, the Canadians in the North like you. Um, in the West, I get the Blues, unless Colorado gets a goalie. I really think the goalie thing might hurt them uh, going forward. So I got the Blues there. And, still got them uh, loaded, though, Murph, the Avalanche. They are so I know, loaded. I know. They are loaded with talent. I, you I know, think – they, they've got Taves that they got from the Islanders now yeah. with Makar, and it's just like lightning bolts going by you. I've been watching some of the film, and it's like, whoa. Yep. I, I, yeah. I think Colorado is the best team by far talent-wise in that division. I, I know what you're saying about St. Louis. They're well rounded. Yeah. I think Tory Krug's going to be really good there. Um, you know, they're going to miss Tarasenko, uh, I think. But he's coming back. That's that's the big thing I like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll, the we'll see how they do. Yeah. But I, I – that's a toss up, I think, between St. Louis and, and Colorado. They'll probably yeah. be the two teams playing and they played uh, to advance yeah. out of that division at the very end. Um, but I, I like Colorado. Um, I, I think Washington is a good call in, in the East. That's going to be a tough division. I think they've got one last run in them. You know, they kind of punted on the return to play last year. Yeah. They didn't yeah. even look like they wanted to be in the bubble. I think it's going to be a different story. Uh, this year, I like the Vancouver Canucks in the Canadian division. Uh, that's a very an extremely talented team. Um, and yeah, the Lightning. It has to be the Lightning uh, in the uh, what well, the Central. Um, and I would go with. Uh, I'm going to go Avalanche, uh, Stanley Cup champs. Adrian Dater is going to have a ball out there this year. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go uh, Zidane Char and the Washington Capitals. Oh, uh, there you go. Winning the I like cup. It. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, Bru with COVID, Z can't bring it back and uh, rub it in their face. But <laughs> um, Bruins fans would have a field day with that if that well, happened. And I'm going to make this bold prediction right now, Hags. And I don't know. You're going to probably think I'm smoking a little too much of the wacky tobacco, which I do. But <laughs> uh, you know, I'll tell you right now, I don't. I don't see the Boston Bruins making the playoffs. I think yeah. they miss. I do too. I think it's going to be um, the Caps. I think it's going to be the Islanders. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be the Flyers, and I think it's going to be the Rangers. And the I, think the Penguins, okay. I think the Penguins and the Bruins both. Um, okay, so you're going you're going the full Monty there. Gotcha. Yep. I like, yep. I like it. Rangers All right. are my dark horse, man. I like that. Uh, team the Rangers a lot. Are great. And you and you know, for those gamblers out there, you know, I was along with the ice guys here, like you can get some really good value on the Rangers right now. I think they're like seven plus seven hundred to win it all or to win a division. So um that's what he Rupper made a good point there. There's gonna be those teams like yep. you're talking about with the Rangers oh. that you don't have in your head right now yeah i mean I, the, when you say a team that comes out of nowhere you don't expect the one team that i think of in my head is exactly what he said the buffalo sabers who one of yeah. these years they're going to put it all together they need a and, yeah they do but like yeah. they've got enough talent on that team where in a shortened yeah. season where they could definitely make a push but in that division i just don't think they're, they're going to get they're going to yeah. get torn yeah. apart just like the devils will get torn apart in the, in that division you know they're going to find the easy w somewhere right those those, uh, <laughs> those big dogs but uh, I appreciate you, you throwing the gambling knowledge out there for the oh, yeah. uh, degenerate gambler go. portion <laughs> of our listenership, Murph. That's always a demographic we want to throw a bone to every once in a while. That's, so let's wrap it up for yep. uh, the Boston Hockey Now podcast. Uh, for Jimmy Murphy, this is Joe Haggerty. Uh, we're signing off. We're hopefully going to do one of these uh, just about every week, have a different guest. Thanks uh, to Mike Rupp from uh, the NHL Network for coming on with us. And let's drop the puck and get hockey ready. Sounds good.